Okay. The override code. So, did... Did our last save file just not save that conversation? The emergency can... release is just above the door. It's a manual release, so I can't do it for you. Up here? Ah! Okay, punch in this code. 32770. The rest is up to you. Good luck. That sounds dangerous. Here we go. Emergency door release initiated. Please stand by. Switching to oxygen reserves. Are we pressurizing? Welcome, come, come, come to my brain, brain, brain. All that I am is contained in that sphere. You're gonna have to open me up. There's a manual code book. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I think it has to do with exchanging the red lights for green and vice versa. You'll have to figure it out. After that, well, if it works, the next time I talk to you should be from inside your suit. Is the vice versa not redundant in that case? I think I'm gonna switch on my translating biochip as well. Just in case, we pass more of those perhaps beings on the way here. All right, now what are we doing here? We can touch all three of these and all three of these and also something in the middle, apparently. Lexi says, I like Arthur. He's my computer boyfriend now. That's one kind of boyfriend you haven't had yet, which is actually kind of surprising. Okay. We can move... Well, we can tap on a circle to move it to the blank circle. Doo -doo -doo. This seems surprisingly puzzle-like. Unable to complete in current state resetting code lock. Okay. What's going on here? Can we do this? Yes. Is it that you can't move a thing to things? Okay. Can we do that one? Why did that beep when I did that? Hard to tell. Okay, we can do that. Can we do this? Now, once it touches the other edge, it restarts? I mean, we can't move the blanks, blank circle to the edge? Is that what you're saying? So it seems that we cannot move any of the circles backwards, so to speak. Let's move this one down. There we go. And maybe we can't move them three pips either. Okay. So maybe we can, does it know if something is impossible, like you got yourself into an unsolvable state? That's what I was assuming, but I don't know what determines whether it's a solvable state. Okay, so we should be able to do that. Um, let's try this next, bottom one. And we'll go like that, and we'll jump this guy. Then we do this one. Yep, then we push this up, and then we go, boop, and finally, beep. To anyone who may be listening, my name is Dr. Kenneth Farnstein. I've made this recording in the event that 
that anything should happen to me. This message is an appeal. 26 years ago, I undertook an experiment to create a new kind of artificial intelligence. Demonstrating the traits of self-awareness and, and creativity, my results have been astonishing. At first, I considered the experiment a failure. I had created an erratic, unpredictable, thoroughly irrational program, but it had a curiosity, you see. And occasionally, a burst of insight so lucid, I was astonished at the understanding. Not the cold conclusions of a machine, but something more right-brained, more intuitive. It was life. It was a result I, I was unprepared for. Author is not simply a program, he is, he is a person. And I have sheltered him here from the circus I would, would make of him. I'm afraid I may have corrupted him enough with my obsession for 20th century media. I, I ask that you understand. And if you can find it in yourself to, to protect him for a while, he, he means a, a great deal to me. Not exactly flattering. In less than a hundred years of progress, you can fit me on a chip. So, how do you like my new home? Comfy little interface, huh? So, this is how I think I can help you out. I couldn't figure out a way for you to ask me questions directly, but I've created a comment button that I'll light up if I have something to offer. I've actually become pretty fascinated with art history and stuff, and by the looks of what your future self is researching, well, I could cut come in handy. I've also created a help button in case you get stuck on a problem. You know what they always say, two minds are better than one. But hey, you're the detective. I'm sure you'll want to figure it out on your own before resorting to my help. There's more info in the chip's inventory description. You might want to check that out. As to our mutual friend, he was reprogramming one of my sculptures in the biomass processing module. I think he set up some sort of harmonics response, but the only way to find out for sure is to visit the scene of the crime. And that means getting to that part of the station. I gather you don't have control over where you jump to in a time zone, so it may be a trek. The accident really trashed that part of the station. In fact, we may want to come back to it later. All right, so maybe it won't make much difference when we get to it, but to be totally honest, I'd much rather go somewhere other than back to the station my first trip out of here. You know what I mean? We could use a little adventure. All right, Gage and Arthur's big adventure. I like the sound of that. Okay. Well, we have Arthur. He's right up at home there on the far right, and our cursor is apparently very, very, very... sluggish now. I think the first thing we'll do is save again. It looks like the keyboard itself is very sluggish. That's not good. Did we do it? Arthur is a big program. Looks like we did it. Ah, oh, the joys of emulation. I am clicking the cancel button, right? There we go. Okay. Um... I'm not sure if this is the keyboard or something else. Maybe it's the video processing, all that kind of thing. So I'm going to try to restart the keyboard. Hopefully that won't, doesn't mean I completely lose control, but I think it's worth the risk. Okay. Oh! It was worth the risk. We're back in the game. Feels nice and zippy now, actually. Okay! So, Arthur is our new AI, serving the role of the previous game's AI. Let's see now. Let's look around. We are here in the AI Nexus. And there's not too much that we can do. Can we go back? Bye, Jessica. Did you make up that name? Right, I don't think we are going anywhere else here. Let's click him. 
he has no other... None of his buttons are active either. Let's check out the info he said that we should check out. Description. I've usually got something to say, so press the comment button if you want to hear it. The help button is in case you get hopelessly stuck. You can use either button more than once in any situation, but thinking too hard overloads my neurocircuitry. So use the help button only as a last resort. Hmm. He did warn us. Maybe that means we don't get as many points if we overuse his help. <laughs> okay. I think that's our cue to jump out of here and look for something else. We've done well this time. Did he tell us what Arthur stands for? Was there any indication that Arthur was uh, an initialization of any kind? I thought it was just a name. Also, it's clear that Farnstein uh, created Arthur separately from himself. I wasn't sure if Arthur was like a copy of, of Farnstein and had the same voice and all that, but apparently not. Didn't he say artificial human Ursula? I thought that was to avoid the word artificial because it was, it was, had an innuendo or something, connotation. Uh, anyway, it might have been that, but I missed it if so. Anyway, I think I'd like to go back to the studio just because I miss it most, and I think there is a chance we might be able to progress there at least a little bit. So let's do it. We could take Arthur home, I guess. All right, here we are, Arthur. We should hear what Arthur thinks of our digs. That's right. So is this real? Are we really in Leonardo's studio? Well, Arthur, maybe. Now, I want to see what our new translation biochip says about this text. Oh boy, now we're getting prolonged clicks and stuff. Arthur is an artist, so I'm sure he'll appreciate this field trip. So is Arthur an artist if he's not Farnstein? Come on, biochip. Let's see you do some work. Up. Down. Lock. Unlock. Yep. That sounds about like what we thought. I think we need Arthur there by default. He gets privileges. All right, so. We know we need this elevator to be upright. I don't think there's an advantage to having it down at all. I said he's a sculpture, maybe Arthur made it, and you know things were just attributed to Farnstein because he created Arthur. That's possible. All right, can he comment on the evidence at long last? Looks like he has a comment button. This is Leonardo's portrait of a musician. This is supposed to be a friend of his, Atlante Migliarotti, whom he traveled to Milan with, but historians were never sure. I suppose if we waited until morning, we could find out for certain, but, well, I guess we could save that for the next trip. You were right. Well done, Lexi. All right, let's see if he has another comment. I wonder if Leonardo realizes he'll never finish this piece. If records are correct, he's been working on it for, what are we in, 1488? About three years now. Another two to go before he gives up on it for some reason. I wonder why. They have some falling out? You know, we could jump a couple of years forward and... Okay, sorry. <laughs> Wrong time. Okay. Well then maybe the evidence is somewhere in the painting. Once again, I still don't know how specific we have to be. Is it another pixel hunt? The nose of the musician. The eye of the musician. The other eye of the musician. The 
the hat of the musician? If it's not on the painting, where is it, you know? We've done so much of this. It's not on the other easel. Yeah, looking down here. So this, the text at the top of the screen still says anachronism detected. And the light is still on. Could it be that the evidence is down here somewhere? Doesn't seem to be doing much for us. Oh, and the text is still on the screen. Yeah, we're still not getting it. Over here? I'm going to keep my eye on the text and see when it vanishes. Turn while looking down. Okay, so we've seen most of the directions so far, I think. So there's this is immediately beneath the painting. Then this is one to the right. There's a green spot there. And then here's another to the right. Back here, looks like a either paint splatter or a blood stain. And then another to the right. You can see all these jars and things like that. And I think that's it, all four directions. No evidence collected. And here's up. I want the evidence to be in the candle. So the text did disappear when we moved away from that decision point. Yeah, it could be that we just haven't found it yet. But did you notice that about the text? Manual temporal anachronism scan mode activated. Oh, that's because I hit locate and I wasn't near evidence. Deactivated. Okay, let's try that again. Good morning, Tom. Welcome. So watch this. Text appears. Still there. The light here is still on. It beeps when we go down to level. Still there. Still there. Still there. So we can be in the same point. But it always beeps when we're looking this way. I don't get it. Hmm. Anyway, something, I think uh, when I was skimming a walkthrough, I got the very vague impression that there might also be something else we're missing around here, which might, might just owe to my lack of thoroughness in looking around even though there has been an increasing amount of that. Let's keep Arthur handy. No comments on the door, Arthur? Da Vinci really was a master of contraptions. It looks like when the Duke of Milan allowed him to build this place, he got a chance to field test a lot of his ideas. I've been trying an awful lot of clicking while I've been moving around, but I don't know whether you have to.
Oh ho! There's a lever. Why does it sound like our footsteps? Oh, because we're walking in circles. Cool. Yeah, it was just we just had to push this part of it. We're going an awful long way down here, aren't we? Excuse me. Looks like a capstan. Hmm, the music has changed its style a little bit. That's a pretty ingenious device. There must be a system of cogwheels driven by that turnstile that run in that triple helix track. <laughs> Kinda neat for moving furniture, but I'll take the stairs any day. Notice there isn't a pulley system down here to lower the platform? I'm sure that was by design. Da Vinci was known to be very secretive, even paranoid, and he liked his privacy. Okay. Uh, well, we're down. Oh no. And we're up. Oops. Oh well. Let's chat while we're on the elevator. How's it going? Tom, we found Arthur. We've been listening to him. I don't know if that would get Buddy's attention. are usually fond of that, I think. Well, they at least take notice of it. Back down we go. Buddy's having a treat. Oh, that's good news. Buddy, well done. This actually does seem like it would be fun, doesn't it, Tom? I would enjoy using elevators like this. As long as they were reliable. Nothing's worth it worse than a stuck elevator in any time period, you know? Okay, so I was trying to figure out why we couldn't go anywhere. This looks like a pathway, doesn't it? Oh, this is a door, that's why. Those doors in this game, I'll tell you. Look, it's so far away and we push it from here. Where are we? Are there humans? It's the middle of the night, there aren't supposed to be humans. A courtyard! Ooh. Lexi says, he has this habit, if I'm in the bedroom, of waiting in the bathroom after successfully using it to get praise and a treat. That's, that's, you know, you can't blame him for deduction and cleverness. Okay, so we can only go one way here. Wow. Amazing. With all the different things Da Vinci had his hands in, he still had time to keep this place looking pretty. So we can go this way or we can go to the door. Let's go around first. You never know when there's going to be some item on the floor, right? Of where we'd need that. Or an alien stuck to the ceiling. You are right, Lexi. Okay, so where have we gone? I'm losing a little bit of track here. So we came from there. Just looking everywhere, don't mind me. Or did we walk around this entire thing and now we're coming in from the other side? Ah, yes, T. Okay, here goes. No warnings from our suit yet about human presence. Ludovico Sforza, Il Moro, the current Duke of Bari, is actually a usurper. His young nephew, Gian Galeazzo, is the rightful heir, but hey, what are uncles for? 
Let me handle things till you grow up, kid. Pity he never got the chance. No big surprise that the kid died mysteriously before assuming the head of the family. The court of Milan was renowned for its pageantry, art, and music. Leonardo's previous patron, Lorenzo di Medici, may have sent him here knowing that the gesture would placate his powerful and ambitious neighbor. Though why da Vinci made the move has always been a mystery. All this, of course, would seem to be a strong motivation. A place where a model would sit to be painted. Hmm. This is quite an area. What have we here? Wooden pegs. Okay. Well, of course there'd be some useful things around a... an art studio of such importance. document. Arthur, care to interpret? He didn't really mean for you to ride that thing naked, did he? You could get something caught in there. Another contraption. It takes us over a castle wall, perhaps? And it uses... Well, it does use a rope of some kind. Don't know if it needs wooden pegs or not. Speaking of which, let's examine what we have here. If you're not naked, are you really doing science? Object analysis wooden pegs. These are wooden construction pegs. The use of such pegs predates the popularization of the nail. I see. Should we leave the remote here? Maybe he'd like it. This is a strong metal bar, approximately one meter in length. That's right, we saved this from the station. We still haven't used our grappling hook yet. Nor have we used our Gino Andrews sinkhole. This is a 20 meter length of hemp rope. We have so many useful items now. Good thing our suit has a null pocket this time. We don't need to throw away <laughs> the TSA's only key to get the <laughs> the only disc from the past. Arthur is most useful. He at least provides good commentary. I remember when I played the Journeyman Project 3, I tried to get through all of it without ever using him for help. All right, so we have a ship's wheel there on the left. Is that anything? something else here? Is it, uh, it looks like a, what do you call this? It's not a lathe. It's just a buzzsaw in a table. Oh. 
Well, if we ever need to slice something. We can't just put anything on there. We have one super long peg. Still under construction. With the current war against the Venetian Republic, money must have been coming in sporadically. Still don't really have my orientation. I think we've explored like halfway around this giant room. And this is where we came in from? No, that's the buzzsaw. Why can't we go anywhere else from here, then? Is this as far around as we can walk? There just isn't a path. So then we walk this way. Maybe Gage's pathfinding skills are just fairly weird. We can't go through the middle of all this. We just have to go around everything, it seems. Oh! Are those the pegs that we're now holding? Yeah, that table disappears, I see. So I guess that's just a good old glitch or oversight. I'm confused. Why would Arthur offer help here? What is this? Is this something? Do the pegs get used here? Did we walk somewhere where we could only walk one way or something? Or is it another th thing where we need to look down in order to walk? What's going on? Okay, we can walk through here. All right. Look at those patterns in the floor. Oh, that's just a design. But they seem to be using different... Are they using different types of brick? Those look like different types of brick. That hoist design looks like the one that Leonardo sketched up for the casting of the horse sculpture he was planning, but never got around to. Well, at least he got use out of the hoist. Okay, so we go through here. Now we're back to that, but we can look at this too, apparently. What have we here? Si tangeberis meos instrumenta nocebor tuam caput. If you touch my thing, I'll kill you. Is that what it says? Let's find out. You touch on my tools, I break a your face. Not bad, huh? The, activa the uh, activation, the translation was a touch whimsical, but apparently there is nothing here that we can touch. But did we touch uh, his tools?
What have we here? A side path. Where'd you go, Arthur? Oh, I think you can also use a biochip by holding control and pressing the name that it, the letter that it starts with. Ah, yes, that's gonna be helpful. Now, why would we be able to come up here? Look out the window. No, there's no window here. What do you think, Lexi? Is this just a place to look from? Hmm. It's a lovely vantage point. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, so we looked at that. We didn't get to look at the other ones. Looks like we're not going to be looking at the other ones. Looks like school's in. Always good to keep a bunch of students and apprentices handy to boost your standing and do all the grunt work for you. Like most Renaissance artists, Da Vinci believed that designing and giving orders were gentlemen's work, and actually executing the piece was work for servants. That's why he rarely finished anything. Okay, okay, a little professional jealousy. Is this the same outdoor area where we were before? I don't think it is. Ooh. Heck of a night. This was before light pollution was invented. I'm not sure the sky really looks like that. That's a bit of an Orion theme there, but... Yeah. Well, there's no question what kept Da Vinci the busiest. With his patron waging war against the Venetians, there must have been a lot of pressure on him to give the Duke a strategic advantage. There's that thing that orbits us. Really trying to mount this chord progression in this area, huh? I've seen this in Da Vinci's sketchbooks. It's cleverly designed to hit the operator in the head with a barrage of rock. Is that what it is, Arthur? Oh, did we actually hit one of those guys over there? Arthur's doing a little bit of fourth wall breaking there. I don't know if you could hear that. It wasn't too loud, but it's, he said something like, that's where Presto... You don't want to go over there. That's where Presto put all the low-res low art, I think. If they let us go everywhere, we'll never finish the game. Yes, Arthur. I see what you're defining this as. Hmm, clever. Now, if they were inflatable, then that's... So they're sample enemies. I quote Da Vinci, translated from the original Latin, Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. <laughs> That's our entrance, right? Look, a primitive harvester. A harvester of human lives. <laughs> Sorry. 
back in the episodes of Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> Still, those shop hay bales are <clears throat> making me a little queasy. Maybe he only knows about Presto Studios because he studied 20th century stuff. Okay, we can go back in, but we didn't get anything out here. We didn't do anything. Is there something out here for us to find still? You know? Something on the ground, maybe? There's a ladder right there. Of course. Why didn't I think of that before? We even automatically walk up to it and up it. You okay there, Gage? All right. So does that mean no, don't even try it? Or does that mean yes, solve it somehow? Want to do it again just for fun. I think Gage could do better than that. I think, I just think that Gage would be capable of climbing a ladder. Hello, buddy. Not an ancient ladder. Looks like Da Vinci was testing out some of his designs for siege defenses as well. Hmm, trying to outwit himself, I guess. I wonder who's winning. something here then or aren't we simple questions you know well I won't forget this place I still don't remember how we got in here I mean I remember but I don't know how we get back apparently we can climb up that ladder too bad we can't take it is that the clue this ladder is better than that ladder These ages are as big as ages. Ages upon ages. Well, I'll be dead before we solve them. Gage, start making sense. Okay. So there's a tool place. There's the model sitting place, right? Or is that the model sitting place? Go through the middle here. Always keep looking around, always keep looking around, always keep looking around. Wow, he actually tried to make the tank. Looks like he succeeded. I'd like to see the six burly guys who are gonna make this thing move at any kind of speed, though. The guys inside would be well protected, but when you attack someone in a UFO, you can pretty much kiss the element of surprise goodbye. There's our buzzsaw. Oh. 
What's this? Is this a Morse code transmitter? Pre-Morse code? Something we can take. A drive assembly? Let's have a closer look at that. This is a complete gear assembly for one of Da Vinci's works in progress. Oh, yes. Oh, there isn't a buzzsaw here at all. My god. Renaissance power tools. Da Vinci was the 15th century Bob Vila. That's actually apt. So there was something around here. I'd say we're driving without gas now. He's invented the table saw? Now this is stretching my suspension of disbelief. And crying to get the flywheel up to speed, and in minutes you have an attractive new den. Still stuck. Oh, there's our entrance. And there's another one. Doors are locked, yo. All right, that's a bit better. 